Hi, it's Shannon here from houseimprovements.com and uh, today we're going to start our uh, series on building a shed. So we're going to do the first video here and uh, basically what we're building is a six foot by eight foot shed. Uh, it's going to have a gable roof with a 612 pitch so uh, one of the videos will be uh, getting into cutting the actual s small little rafters for it. And uh, other than that, uh, basically this first video we're going to start with uh, building the floor structure getting it on some skids, building the structure, making sure everything's level and uh, putting down some sheeting. Uh, if you can see behind me, we've got uh, pretty much all the framing materials here and some of it is pre-cut. Uh, so we won't be showing you uh, on more, some of the basic things, we won't be showing you the cutting. Uh, once we do get to the rafter video, we will show you uh, how to figure it out and cut it. Um, so you can see we've got some pressure treated lumber in this first stack. This will all be the uh, flooring materials. So we've got the four by four skids, which are right here. And then all the two by four framing that we'll use to actually build the floor structure. And we'll cover that with uh, five eighths inch pressure treated plywood as well. That way, uh, you know, if you have any moisture issues or, uh, you know, snow and that sort of thing, uh, the, the floor is the first thing that's going to get wet. So uh, we want to make sure it's pressure treated. The rest we uh, are just using spruce, spruce lumber. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. We're going to uh, build the shed. Uh, it's going to get vinyl siding and it's going to get a steel roof and also a steel roll up door, which uh, in this area is getting pretty popular for sheds. They're, uh, they're a nice feature to have. So, so anyways, uh, we're gonna get reset up here and we're gonna start with the uh, setting up the skids, getting things leveled up, and uh, frame the floor. Okay, so we've uh, got the uh, basic framing material over here to do the floor. Uh, I've just set the skids out of the way for right now. Uh, as you can see, we're working inside uh, for this video just so we can control the elements a little bit. Uh, so normally you're gonna be working outside. Uh, you might be building the shed more than likely right in place. So one of the first things you'd want to start with is uh, probably getting your skids sitting down on a, a level surface. You know, uh, you, you can be on the ground, but you obviously the ground isn't always going to be level. So you might need to put some uh, flat cinder bricks or uh, some kind of uh, stepping stones or something like that. Set into the ground or however you have to do it to get a level surface. Lay your skids out and then start framing your uh, floor on top. Uh, because we're working inside today, I'm going to assemble the floor, at least the floor framing, um, and then I'm going to just flip it out of the way, put the skids in place, uh, do a little bit of a shim job if I have to on the floor here, on the concrete floor, lay the framework on top and uh, show you how I'm going to attach it before I sheet the floor. So uh, <coughs> like I said, I've got everything marked out. I'm going 16 inches on center. Uh, it's all pressure treated lumber. Um, you can reference to my uh, framing video, wall framing video uh, as well, just to see how I measured these out. Uh, I'm not going to duplicate what I've already shown everybody. So uh, if you haven't seen it, you can go there and have a look. And uh, as, as I showed in that video as well, you know, you want to look down every piece of lumber for arches and lay all the arches the same way. So if you're going to, if they do have crowns, you want to put them all up or down, whichever you're going to do. I like to put them up, they sit better, just so uh, it stays fairly consistent. Uh, these are short enough, uh, there isn't much of a crown in them at all. So, Okay, so what I'm going to do, like I said, I've got everything pre-cut. I'm going to go ahead and nail it, fasten it together. We're using a 2x4 framing, and uh, so I'm going to attach at every floor joist, which is what this is, I'm going to attach uh, using two nails into each end. Uh, you could use screws if you want. I prefer nails myself. They're a little stronger. So uh, we, we just want to flush the top of this up to the top of here. And of course on this first one, I'm putting it flush on the end. All the other ones, there's a mark. And I don't, I, you probably can't see them on the camera. There's a mark every 16 inches on center that I'll be lining those ones up to, but also still flush to the top. So. I'm also going to put on my safety glasses. For those of you who haven't seen this gun, this is a pass load gas operated uh, framing nailer. So it use a, uses a combination of a battery pack here and a gas cartridge here to uh, propel the nails.
Okay, so that's one side. I'm just going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so there's our main uh, structure of the floor. And uh, I'm just going to lean it up out of the way and then put the skids into place. Okay, so I've laid the 4x4s out just roughly uh, approximately where they need to be. I've checked with my level in a few different places, both directions, just to see uh, how far out we are. Like I said, uh, we're working on a concrete floor here, so it's actually pretty good. So I'm not going to bother shimming. The worst spot is about an eighth of an inch, so that's not anything to worry about on this. So what I'll do, I'll just get them spaced out here, a little closer to exactly what I want. And then we'll lay the, uh, lay the uh, floor out on top of it. And move everything into position. Okay, so you get the basic idea of what I'm doing here. Uh, the next step, I'm going to uh, look after is, and you can see here, I, I've uh, pre-drilled some holes. What I'm going to do, these holes are so that I can attach the frame securely to the, to the uh, skids. So what I've got is some uh, six inch leg bolts with a washer. And I pre-drilled these holes so that these will uh, go down through them and attach right down into the 4x4. And uh, that'll allow if we, uh, in this case, we have to actually move this shed around afterwards to get it where it has to go. So it's going to make it a little more secure. Uh, maybe not necessary if you're just building the shed right on, right on the spot it's going to stay. Uh, you could uh, lay your floor down on here and put some normal deck screws or nails or whatever down into the 4x4s four four just to hold things in place. But uh, because we're going to actually move it around, I'm uh, going to attach it a lot more securely than we normally probably would. So uh, to do that, I'm going to use an impact driver. And I just have to grab it. Okay, so uh, I've got my bolts ready and uh, my impact driver with the socket and driver. I'm just flushing the 4x4, the skid, up with the side and the end here. So I can do my first... Uh, attach my first bolt. I guess what I didn't mention is the reason I pre-drilled this and also drilled a larger hole so that everything would go down flush. So the heads of these bolts wouldn't be sticking up above here when I put the plywood on. So you can see they aren't sticking up at all. It's all tucked down in there and it's out of the way of the plywood when I sheet the floor. So I'm just going to move all the way down along this side, just moving the skid in flush to the side of the framework and then putting the bolts in. Okay, so I did that one side. I'm going to do uh, the other side and then up the center. In the center I've uh, done the two ends and then I picked one floor joist in the middle to attach. But uh, they're attached the same way. So I'm just going to do those up and then it'll be all attached to the skids and we'll square the floor up after that. Okay, so we've got our, uh, in this case, nine bolts all attached down into the, uh, into the framework. Uh, it's worth mentioning that uh, anytime you're using pressure treated materials, you should be using hot dip nails, stainless steel nails, or uh, ceramic coated nails. Uh, the material they uh, pressure treat, the preserve the wood with uh, is corrosive or can be. So standard uh, fasteners will rust over time. So I uh, thought that would be worth mentioning. And also, I guess while I'm at it, I used three inch Nails uh, is what I nailed all the floor joists in with.
just I don't think I mentioned that before. So we've got things sitting there right now. I want to square the floor up. The easiest way to square up a uh, rectangular or square shaped surface is to measure diagonally corner to corner. And you should end up, if it's square or when it is square, you should end up with an equal measurement. So I'm just going to see what we're sitting at here. And we're very close right there, but uh, I'm a little bit longer in this diagonal that I'm hooking on again. So that means I need to just try to squeeze it a little bit, which makes it smaller and actually makes the other one a little longer. It's not going to take much. I was less than an eighth of an inch. So in reality, I'm going, only had to move it, you know, sixteenth basically. If I can get that on there. That'll be good right there. Okay, so we've got things squared up. And uh, we just have to be careful at this point until we have the sheeting on that we don't bump it or kick it or whatever because that'll uh, swing it out of square again. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just uh, toenail with the uh, pass load. A couple nails, one on each side of each of the floor joists that didn't get bolted down. And uh, I measured those out 16 inches on center on the skid just so that when I do the plywood, I know that the flooring members are all straight. Okay, so that uh, secures that all up. I'm just going to double check. I know what my measurement was diagonally, so I'm just going to double check that I didn't move it. I'm sure I didn't. No, it's good. Okay, so we've got that. The basic rough framework for the floor is all sitting there. I'm going to switch my nails out to two and three eighths nails here. And I want to put my sheeting on now. So uh, what I'm going to do, I've got my sheets leaning here. I'm going to drag them over. Uh, I'm going to start from this end, so I'm going to be flush here and flush here and I'm going to let the excess hang over on that end. My sheets, the 8 foot direction is going to go this way. Uh, that, because I've laid it out from that end, that should end up being right on the center of this floor joist. So then I can lay my other sheet down starting there, flush to this end and tight to the one I just put on. So I'm going to start with one of them and I'll just trim them off to, to length afterwards. Okay, so I'll just, again, I'm just being careful I don't uh, slide the actual floor because I don't want it to move out of square. And uh, I've got that first corner where I need to be. So I'm going to put one nail in it just to help me out here. So that'll kind of give me a pivot point so I can come down to this corner. I want to bring the plywood flush to the end of the floor. Just like that, and I'll put another nail. Okay, and uh, that brought me right flush here already. So I'll stick that nail in. And the same thing here. Okay, so I've got that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put five nails across the end of the sheet here. Just like so. And I'm going to do probably about seven along here. I'm spacing them approximately a foot apart. And I'm just going to leave it like that for now. I'm going to get my next sheet on, get it all tacked down similar. Actually, I, can, I guess I can nail off this side. Okay, now I'll, I'll lay my other sheet on there, get it all s straight and everything, and then uh, cut my, uh, my excess off and finish all my nailing, including the ones down the middle. So 
I'll get this sheet laying in here. And again, we're using all pressure treated for the whole floor structure, including the sheeting. So I'm just pushing it over tight to the one I've all, the sheet I've already secured there, getting it flush on this end. I'll put my first nail there to make my pivot point. Now, I, this is overhanging here, but I can see because of where I put my nail, where, basically where my uh, outer edge is, so I'll put a nail in there. And because of the design of this shed, I've designed it so it's actually eight by six to the outside of the plywood when the walls are up. So my floor is just slightly smaller because my plywood I'm gonna run by and you'll see that in, in the next couple of videos. But uh, so that actually gives me an inch of overhang here. So I just have to keep my nails back a little bit. And I'm gonna nail across the end like I did before. Like so. And I'm going to come in and just nail this corner like that. Okay, so now I basically got the sheeting tacked in place. I could, I could actually throw a couple in here again. This is on that, centered on that one up the middle. Okay, so we're nice and secure. We don't have to worry about the floor uh, system coming out of square again. Uh, the sheeting, the nails and the sheeting are going to hold it all straight. Uh, I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use a chalk line, which uh, I think I need to go grab one. Okay, so I've got my chalk line, and what I'm going to do first is snap a line to uh, get this outer edge, and then I'm going to snap a line to get this outer edge. So to do that, I need to just get a couple pencil marks here. So I'm looking at the framework underneath here. I'm sliding my little square up against it, just putting a mark there. So that's where I'm going to hook my chalk line and go all the way to this end. And on this end, I can actually see the framing because it's out flush to the end. So I just want to line my chalk line up at the edge of that, snap a line there. So now I can cut that whole edge right off. And I'm just going to use my cordless skill saw. I'm going to set the depth of the blade just slightly deep, thicker than the plywood or deeper than the thickness of the plywood. Okay, I'm going to put my safety glasses on. Oops. And I'm just going to cut along that line and get rid of this excess plywood here. Okay, so we uh, have that end cut. Um, now the main reason I didn't nail this whole edge or this one is that uh, once I have the plywood cut, I can actually see exactly where I am. I'm not guessing as to how far in I needed to nail. Um, so now we need to snap a line along this end to cut this back edge off so I can line it up with the edge of the framework underneath. And I'll just do the same thing there with my saw. Get rid of that little one inch lip that's there. Okay, just like that. So that'll make that easier to nail as well now that this piece is gone. Get rid of that. Um, so then the other thing I'm gonna do, just get rid of some dust here. The other thing I'm going to do because you noticed I didn't put any nails into the uh, center floor joists that are in there. Now that I've cut the, these, this excess plywood off, I can see where the center of my joists were. And I'll just put a little pencil mark lining up with my nails. Uh, right here. And what I'll do, this just makes it easier again so that when you're nailing, you're actually sure to be nailing into the floor joists. I'm just going to snap some lines there just for nailing purposes. And it just uh, gives you a guide. So we're going to have one there. Another one here. 
Now the center one is a joint in the plywood, so we can easily see that. So we'll skip it, go to here, and one last one here. Okay, I'm going to use the pass load again. I'm still using the 2 and 3 8 nails. And I'm going to nail right along here. Uh, again, about a foot apart. Okay, so that's that outer edge done. I'm going to do this back side. You're trying to nail as straight down, you know, as you can, otherwise the nails may come out. You know, if they go on an angle, they can protrude out here. You don't want that. Now I'm gonna nail along those uh, chalk lines, those guidelines I put in. Okay, just like that. So right there, we've uh, really, we've basically completed our floor. So we've got the floor structure. It's good and solid. Uh, I like to use the 16 inches on center for the joists, uh, just simply because it is more solid. You could use two by six framing if you wanted for that. You know, on a bigger shed where it's maybe spanning more or you're gonna load it up with uh, heavier materials or what have you, you may want two by six framing in there. But in this case, we just went two by four. Um, I think that's uh, pretty much all I can tell you. Uh, I think we're good for uh, that part of building the shed floor. Thanks for watching our first video on our shed building series. You can also see all our other videos and find our other videos for the shed series uh, on our YouTube channel uh, where you can subscribe to it or you can also come onto the forum on the website and ask any questions you might have. Thanks for watching.